My name is Nils Harit. I have a master and a PhD in chemistry and I'm associate professor at the University of Copenhagen and I have been so for almost 40 years and uh, I'm 65. I have published close to 60 peer-reviewed papers in the best journals and currently I'm involved with research X-ray time resolved spectroscopy on time scales of one millionth of one millionth of a second. This is very fast. About three and a half year ago, I saw accidentally Building 7 going down on a DVD, which was a recording from Stephen E. Jones lecture he gave on Brigham Young University. And um, that caught my attention immediately because f for one thing, I have never heard about this building before. And second, I couldn't understand what was going on because apparently it collapsed with no reason at all. So that as a scientist, I'm trained to trying to understand what's going on around me and I couldn't understand. And from that day, I have not had any free time because uh, later on, I, I started looking into it. I started working on the local scene in Copenhagen, Denmark, and I got involved with the, a team of scientists, which also uh, counts Stephen E. Jones, Kevin Ryan, etc. A total of nine people, and uh, in a kind of research investigating the dust from the collapse on south of Manhattan, and. Uh, in, in the dust, we found what we characterize as unreacted thermitic material um, in the shape of some very tiny red-gray chips, which have different properties. Most importantly is they're still reacting, some of them, and uh, in the reaction they produce molten iron which is the prime indication of a thermitic reaction. And such a reaction can be used to destroy steel structures. Now, thermite is in the old fashioned thermite is a mixture of pulverized aluminum and pulverized rust. And if you can get these this mixture to react, which is not so easy. It produces tremendous heat and this is what you call an incendiary. An incendiary is something which can be used to destroy something by the means of heat. While an explosive is something which reacts, acts with pressure. It knocks things apart. Now, the old-fashioned incendiary is not an explosive. It, but it is still used for military purposes for melting iron structures. What we have found is a modern version of thermite, which we call nanothermite, which is produced in a different way. It is not just two powders being mixed. The material is actually built from the atom scale up. We call it the bottom-up procedure, which is what you do in nanotechnology. This has two consequences for the nanothermite, which separates, distinguishes it from the classical thermite. First, the ingredients are much smaller, which means they are reacting faster and they are more easily ignited. Two, due to the process of producing nanothermite, you have the option of putting in other stuff, other chemicals, which converts the thermite reaction into an explosive reaction. We do not know which role is played by the red grade chips that we found in the dust. But we know, and this was already totally clear before we started investigating the dust, that both explosives and incendiaries were used in the controlled demolition of World Trade Center. This is quite obvious because of other observations. 
the molten iron and other findings in the dust, that both explosives and incendiaries were used. Now, where the red grey chips fit into this picture, we do not know. There's been much speculation about this, in particular because the nanothermite is a very versatile material which can be used in different configurations and people have even speculated maybe it was sprayed on the structure and stuff like that. This is what I call hypothetical blast scenarios, which we should not um, maybe go into here. One point I wish to make, though, is the recent work by David Chandler, where he is looking very closely at the collapse of the South Tower World Trade Center, reveals that the fragments which are being uh, which is, is coming out of the tower, obviously being kicked out by an explosive action, are rocket fragments. For once, they, they, they have a trail of white, a white trail after them, which could be aluminum oxide, which is a product of the thermite reaction. Second, they quite obviously have rocket properties, which, in my opinion, means that when we are that the discussion between incendiaries and explosives is obsolete in this situation. What we are dealing with, I think, in World Trade Center is modern military material which is unknown to the general public. And the red gray chips, the unreacted nanothermite that we have found in the dust is just an indication that there is something wrong. It shouldn't be there. But my feeling presently, we are recording this in 2010, is that we haven't heard the whole story yet. The findings of the nanothermite in the dust is an unambitious proof that something was going on on September 11th, which was unusual. And it, and it is a finding which cannot be accounted for by any other explanation, any other process going on than this was deliberately put in the towers for the purpose of bringing them down. As a consequence, we are demanding, and I as a personally, as a scientist, that a new investigation, when it comes and it will come, should also encompass in looking for remaining explosives and thermitic material in the dust by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Thank you.